Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the cardiac glycosides. This is the structure of the cardiac glycosides. They are having steroid nucleus and we can label the rings with letters A, B, C and D. Now let us give the numbering for this steroid nucleus. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So first we have completed the numbering to the ring A and ring B. Then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. In this way, the cardiac glycosides are having that 17 carbon steroid nucleus, which is going to be attached with a ring. This is nothing but the lactone ring. And this lactone may be either five member ring system, then we can call the cardinolites. Otherwise, if it's a six member ring system, we can call the buffardenolites. So cardioglycosides can be classified into cardinoloid and buffardenoloid based on the size of the lactone ring. And they are also having a sugar moiety at the third position which is attached through the oxygen. But how these rings are going to be fused? What is the stereochemistry of these cardioglycosides? So within the structure of the cardioglycosides, you can observe the rings A, B and C, D. And here the ring A and B are saturated. So they are going to be fused by cis configuration. So cis A by B. When they are fusion on the same side, we call the cis. When they are on the opposite side, we call the trans. So the A and B rings, because they are saturated, they undergo the cis A by B fusion. And what about the C and D? The rings C and D are again saturated. So they are again cis fused. So we can observe the cis C by D fusion. In this way, cardiac glycosides are having the cis A by B and cis C by D fusion. And all we have seen at the 17th position, they are having one of the ring system. This is nothing but the lactone ring system. But this lactone is unsaturated. So unsaturated lactone ring is present at the 17th position. And this ring is going to be attached by beta configuration. So 17 beta lactone ring is present in the cardiac glycosides. Similarly, at the third position, we can observe a hydroxyl group which is going to be attached with the sugar moiety. So this sugar moiety is going to be attached by 3 beta configuration. So here beta means that is above the plane, alpha means below the plane. So here the lactone ring is going to be attached above the plane as well as the sugar moiety again attached above the plane. And we can also observe another OH group at the 14th position and this 14 OH group is again essential for activity and this OH group is again attached by beta configuration. So 14 beta hydroxyl group is an important moiety for the cardiac glycosides. So here the cardiac glycosides are made up of egg glycone and sugar moiety. The activity of the cardiac glycoside is mainly due to the egg glycone. But still the sugar moiety is very important for the transport of the drug within the body. So that's why egg glycones are somewhat less active. So cardiac glycosides are active in the glycoside form only. So when they are going to be hydrolyzed to produce a free egg glycone, they are inactive. Now let us see how these cardiac glycosides are going to act. One of the important targets for the cardiac glycosides on the cardiac membrane is the sodium potassium ATPase pump. This pump is going to work such that after the depolation, what are the sodium that is going to be entering into the cardiac membrane is going to be pumped out of the membrane so that sodium going outside at the same time potassium is coming inside. In this way, sodium potassium ATPase pump is going to pump the sodium outside and potassium inside. But we can observe another type of pump on the cardiac membrane which is nothing but the sodium calcium exchange pump. So this pump is going to bring again the sodium from outside to the inside of the cardiac membrane. At the same time, the calcium is going to be pumped out of the membrane. In this way, the net result is the sodium and calcium are going outside and potassium is coming inside. Now here the cardiac glycosides are going to block the sodium potassium ATPase pump. And when this pump is going to be inhibited, the sodium is not going outside, which results in the increased intracellular sodium levels. And when the intracellular sodium levels increases, it inhibits this pump, sodium calcium exchange pump, thereby it results in the increased intracellular calcium levels. In this way, cardiac glycosides can increase the intracellular calcium levels within the cardiac membrane, which increase the force of contraction. That's why cardiac glycosides act as cardiotonics, which increase the force of contraction. Now let us see the cardinolites. That means the cardiac glycosides which are having the 5 member lactone ring at the 17th position. So cardinolites having general structure like this and we have already seen few other features. They are having the cis A by B and cis C by D fusion. And third position they are having a hydroxyl group attached by beta configuration. This 3 beta hydroxyl group is going to be modified and it is attached with the sugar moiety. 
and 14 beta hydroxyl group is present which is essential for activity and 17th position unsaturated lactone is present which is attached by beta configuration so these are the features of cardinalides and uh, we can observe few other plants like the digitalis strophanthus and convallaria all these are having the cardinalides that means the cardiac glycosides with the five member lactone ring system convallaria is actually an ornamental plant which is having some cardiac glycosides now let us go one by one and let us see which type of components are present in these plants first one is a digitalis which is obtained from the digitalis purpurea this this digitalis purpurea is having common structure like this and it is commonly known as digitalis and one of the common name for this digitalis purpurea is the red fox glow this digitalis is obtained from the dried leaves of this uh, digitalis purpurea and what about the sugar moiety here this sugar moiety is made up of digitoxose units but here three digitoxose units are going to be connected and terminally they are going to be connected by a glucose molecule so here the sugar is made up of four carbohydrates three are the digitoxose units and one is the glucose the digital leaves should be collected and immediately they should be dried at the 60 degrees centigrade why they should be immediately dried one of the reason is if they are not immediately dried the moisture can produce the hydrolysis and it can cause the cleavage of the glycosides such that they are going to produce the egg glycones which are less active similarly the temperature should be at the 60 degrees centigrade and we, sh we should not use the high temperatures because again at the high temperatures it can undergo the hydrolysis so here it is having two important locations where it's undergo the cleavage and produce the inactive metabolites so one is the at the sugar pot by presence of moisture or heat it can undergo the hydrolysis at the sugar moiety such that it is going to produce the egg glycone otherwise it can also undergo a dehydration at the 14th position where OH group is going to be lost as a water molecule now this anhydro derivative is somewhat less active that's why digitalis leaves should be dried immediately after the collection at 60 degrees centigrade now let us see which type of components are present in the digitalis it is having the three important primary glycosides purpurea glycoside a and purpurea glycoside b and third one is the glucogetaloxin all these three are the primary glycosides from which the sugar moieties can be removed to produce the other types of glycosides all these three primary glycosides can produce the three important secondary glycosides which are digitoxin and getoxin getaloxin you can see all these are having similar name first one is the digitoxin second one is the getoxin and third one is the getaloxin these are the secondary glycoside that means they are still having the sugar moiety but they are going to be obtained from uh, primary glycosides by removal of the glucose units so when the primary glycosides undergo hydrolysis the terminal glucose moiety is going to be removed such that they are going to produce the primary glycosides then these secondary glycosides can be further undergo hydrolysis to remove the further three digitoxose units such that they are going to form the egg glycones so digitoxin will give the egg glycone digitoxygenin so here the suffix genin indicates they are the egg glycones similarly getoxin gives the getoxygenin and getaloxin will give the getaloxygenin now these egg glycones are less active compared with the glycosides so we should stop the hydrolysis at this step in order to retain the cardioglycoside activity second one is a digitalis lanata this is again known as a lanata species this is commonly known as gracian fox glow and what about the sugar moiety within the digitalis lanata just like the digitalis purpurea it is again having the digitoxose units now again it is having the three digitoxose units with the terminal glucose moiety but at the last digitoxose unit an acetyl group is going to be attached so the last one is not a digitoxose unit it is a acetyl digitoxose unit in this way lanata is having the acetylated glycosides compared with the digitalis purpurea now this lanata is having the five important primary glycosides lanatoside a lanatoside b lanatoside c as well as d and e so what about these three glycosides so from this one glucose moiety and acetyl moiety can be removed such that they are going to produce the another type of glycosides and lanatoside a will give the digitoxin lanatoside b again by removal of the glucose and acetyl moiety it gives the getoxin and lanatoside c by removal of the glucose and acetyl moiety it going to give the digoxin now the digitoxin all we have seen this is present in the purpurea a glycosides and getoxin is present in the purpurea b glycosides 
what about the desoxin desoxin is not present in the digitalis species and it is one of the new component that is present in the digitalis lanata now let us see how they are going to be analyzed lantoside a b and c all these three glycosides initially hydrolyzed to remove the glucose moiety such that they are going to form the estyl derivatives lantoside a will give the estyl digitoxin and lantoside b give the estyl digitoxin and lantoside c will give the estyl digoxin and all these are going to be produced by removal of the glucose moiety so within the digitalis lanata the lantocytes can undergo the hydrolysis to produce the estyl derivatives so within the plant we can observe both lantocytes as well as the estylated glycosides now these secondary glycosides can further undergo the hydrolysis to remove the estyl moiety such that this estyl digitoxin will give the digitoxin and similarly estyl digitoxin will give the digitoxin and finally estyl digitoxin will give the digitoxin so here which is important digitoxin is more important digitoxin is having the more cardioglycoside activity compared with the digitoxin because the digitoxin dose cannot be easily fixed whereas digitoxin dose can be easily fixed and even we have an antidote available for the digitoxin so digitoxin is therapeutically more important compared with the digitoxin and this digitoxin is only present in the digitalis lanata that's why the glycoside content in the digitalis lanata is expressed in terms of lanatocyte c similarly we can observe the lanatocyte d as well as lanatocyte e so lanatocyte d on removal of the glucose and estyl moieties it give the one of the glycoside digitanin and similarly lanatocyte e on removal of the glucose and estyl moiety it gives the digitaloxin this digitaloxin is also present in the digitalis as a third component so these are the various components in the digitalis lanata both digitalis purpurea as well as digitalis lanata are used as cardiac glycosides but the glycoside content is more present in the digitalis lanata compared with the digitalis purpurea third one is the strophanthus this strophanthus is available in two forms strophanthus combe as well as strophanthus grantus this strophanthus combe will give one of the glycoside k strophanthin whereas strophanthus grantus will give one of the glycoside g strophanthin and this g strophanthin is also called as oyabine again these drugs are also having the cardioglycoside activity and they are useful as cardiotonics so first let us see the strophanthus combe and this is uh, having one of the important component k strophanthoside this k strophanthoside is the primary glycoside present in the strophanthus combe which is undergoing the hydrolysis where the one of the glucose moiety is going to be removed such that it is going to produce the k strophanthin beta this k strophanthin beta is a secondary glycoside from which again one more glucose molecule can be removed such that it is going to produce the cimarin cimarin is the tertiary glycoside present in the strophanthus combe from this cimarin cimarose one of the sugar moiety is going to be removed such that it is going to give one of the aglycone strophanthidine so strophanthidine is the aglycone present in the strophanthus combe and here the cardioglycoside activity mainly observed with the secondary glycoside k strophanthin similarly strophanthus gratus this is having the g strophanthin which is a primary glycoside from which the rhamnose is removed as a sugar moiety such that it is going to give the oyabigenin already we have seen the g strophanthin is called as oyabine which on hydrolysis gives the oyabigenin and this g strophanthin is used as a biological standard for the cardiotonic activity so that's about this cardiac glycosides cardiac glycosides are having the steroidal nucleus with a lactone ring at the 17th position and based on the size of the lactone ring they may be either cardinolites or buffadienolites cardinolites are having the five member lactone ring and buffadienolites are having the six member lactone ring among the cardinolite digitalis purpurea digitalis lanata strophanthus as well as convallaria are few of the examples and within the buffer dyne light squill and red squill are the few of the examples cardin lights are having the cis a by b and cis c by d fusion and third portion they are having a sugar moiety by beta configuration 14th portion beta hydroxyl group 17th portion a lactone ring attached by beta configuration and these cardin glycosides should be immediately dried after the collection in order to prevent the hydrolysis and they are active in the glycoside form only digitalis purpurea is having the purpura glycoside a b whereas digitalis lanata is having the lanatocyte a to e 
and uh, lentocytes are the primary glycoside which on hydrolysis they can produce the purpurea glycosides digital is lenata is therapeutically more important because it's having the digoxin which is obtained from the lenatocyte c so that's for today if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video